Hi, I'm still Ben McSheffrey, and I'm still the technical training manager for Simmons Industries. Today I'll show you how to install the Simmons RL154 metal pop-up lavatory drain assembly. This pop-up lab drain assembly is included with many Simmons lav faucets, and it can stand up to everything you throw at it because it's all metal. It's pretty straightforward to install, but let's go over some minor things that may be confusing for first timers. As always, we'll start with the tools and supplies needed. As far as supplies are concerned, you really only need a few things. Plumber's putty or silicone, depending on your sink material, Teflon tape, and a small piece of sandpaper or emery cloth. For tools, you'll just need a good pair of plumbing pliers that are large enough to grip the drain nut, and some rags or paper towels. Let's break down the pop-up assembly first, so we're on the same page with what terms we'll be using to describe the parts. From the top to the bottom, we have the pop-up stopper and the collar. These two are visible from inside the sink. The overall drain assembly with the overflow cutout, the nut, poly washer, beveled rubber washer, and flat rubber washer, the threaded pop-up rod port and nut, and the scratch thread tailpiece. In a separate bag, we have the lift rod that goes through the faucet, the pop-up rod and ball assembly with clip, and the lift rod linkage. Before we even get into assembling the pop-up, first, we need to prepare the sink. Now, you'll either be installing this on a new sink, or you'll be using it on an existing sink to replace an old pop-up from a previous faucet. If you're installing it on a new sink, Clean up the bottom of the sink outlet with a rag. It may look clean, but oftentimes there's dust or debris on the outlet from when the sink was cast or molded. If you're installing the pop-up on a new cultured marble sink, like this one, sometimes the edge of the outlet can be sharp, so we'll want to sand that lightly to eliminate that sharp edge. It could cut into the beveled washer that makes a watertight seal to the sink, so just take a piece of 100 or 150 grit sandpaper and run it around the outlet evenly a few times to knock off that edge. Once it's smooth and even, we should be good to go. If you're installing this new pop-up on an existing sink, the key here is clean, clean, clean. You're going to want to make sure these two mating surfaces are clean, smooth, and dry. There's typically some nasty left behind inside old sink outlets, so that's where the paper towels come in. It's usually a tasty combination of old putty, toothpaste, and just plain ew. Brace yourself. Sometimes the lower outlet under the sink may have pieces of the old beveled washer stuck to it, so use the sandpaper and rags to make sure you have a clean, smooth surface. The first thing that you'll need to know is what type of sealant to use on the drain collar inside the sink. Plumber's putty is the most common, but some stone materials in cultured marble sinks may stain or negatively react with putty, so the manufacturer may suggest a good quality silicone caulking instead. Check the sink's installation instructions first. Remove the pop-up stopper and set it aside. We'll use it near the very end of this installation. Unscrew the pop-up collar. Now you'll see a black flat washer, a beveled washer, a poly washer, and a brass nut. Here's where things get interesting. Remove the black flat washer and set it aside. Apparently, there are some instances where this washer can be used on certain sinks and basins, but to be honest, we haven't found one yet. We like to include it so that we cover all possible bases with our products. Put it in your toolbox. Maybe you'll find good use for it somewhere. All we need for this installation is the beveled washer, the poly washer, and the brass nut. Next, put a bead of putty or silicone on the underside of the collar and set it aside within reach for now. Now. Grab the drain assembly and unscrew the scratch thread tailpiece from the bottom. It may look like it's all one piece, but it really does unscrew. I promise. Put a couple of wraps of Teflon tape on the scratch threads and screw it back into the drain assembly. Just as tight as you can get it with your bare hands is enough. Don't use pliers on it or you may damage it. Now, with one hand free, feed the drain assembly up through the sink hole and use the other hand to screw the collar on. Same method here, just as tight as you can get it with your bare hands, no tools. Once the collar is on tight, let it settle down into the outlet of the sink and keep it as straight as possible. From underneath, pull down on the assembly to seat the sealant inside the sink and keep light downward pressure on the assembly so you can push the beveled washer up against the bottom of the sink. Now, spin the brass nut and poly washer up against the beveled washer until it's finger tight. Before tightening the nut with the pliers, make sure that the entire assembly is vertically straight and that the port for the pop-up faces the back of the sink. Now, while holding the assembly from spinning, use the pliers to tighten the brass nut clockwise. It's very important to not over-tighten this nut. If you do, you'll either damage the pop-up, damage the beveled washer, crack the sink, or all three. You don't have to be Hercules here. Get it snug, then just give it one more quarter turn. Go easy. When you're confident that's snug, remove the excess putty or silicone that's squeezed out. You'll need paper towels for the silicone, but you can just remove the putty with just your fingers. Now, we're on to the pop-up linkage. Some people have trouble grasping how it works, 
but it's just a simple linkage that uses leverage to move the stopper up and down. The pop-up stopper can be installed in one of two ways, removable and non-removable. Each method has pros and cons. If you choose removable, it makes it easier to clean the pop-up and the collar, but you also run the risk of misplacing the stopper. Lab drains with no stoppers have claimed more than a few pieces of jewelry and Legos over the years, never to be seen again. If you make it non-removable, it tends to form a better seal so you won't lose the stopper, but it makes it a little tricky to clean. As a rule of thumb, we suggest removable in residential spaces without kids and non-removable in public spaces or homes with little ones. For our purposes today, we're going to make it non-removable, but we'll explain the removable method as well. First, unscrew the nut from the pop-up port, but be careful. There's a white washer inside and it may fall out when you unscrew it. Notice that the washer is flat on one side and concave on the other. Make sure that the washer is inserted with the flat side in and the concave side facing out. That concave surface will accept the ball on the pop-up rod. Open the plastic bag that has the pop-up rod linkage inside. You'll notice the pop-up rod with the ball on it has a metal squeeze clip on it. Squeeze the ends together and slide the clip off the rod. In the plastic bag, there's also another white beveled washer, exactly like the one that's inside the drain assembly. Slide that washer over the long end of the rod so the concave face mates with the ball. Now, slide the pop-up nut over the long end of the rod and slide it down to the washer and ball. On the pop-up stopper, you'll notice that the bottom has a flat side and a side with an oval loop in it. That oval loop will accept the short end of the pop-up rod inside the drain assembly. If you wanted to make the pop-up removable, skip this step and just drop the pop-up into the drain as the very last step. In that case, the flat side of the stopper would be lifted by the pop-up rod. Because we're going to make ours non-removable, we'll line up that oval hole with the pop-up rod hole in the drain assembly and insert the pop-up rod. The ball should sit against the beveled washer and the end of the rod should go through the oval hole. Hand tighten the nut onto the drain assembly. Now you should be able to move the stopper up and down by moving the pop-up rod. The last step to this masterpiece is to link the lift rod with the pop-up rod to make the whole thing work. Under the sink, push the pop-up rod down so the stopper pops up inside the sink. Insert the faucet's lift rod down through the faucet so you can see the end under the sink. Now, it's just a matter of connecting these two with the lift rod linkage. In the parts bag, you'll see a flat metal strap with a wing nut on the end. That's the lift rod linkage. Feed the faucet's lift rod into the top of the square end of the linkage, but don't tighten the wing nut yet. Slide the linkage up the rod so that one of the holes in the linkage aligns with the end of the pop-up rod. Grab the squeeze clip and put one end over the end of the pop-up rod. Then, slide on the linkage through one of the holes. Then put the other side of the squeeze clip onto the rod. The goal here is to capture that linkage with the squeeze clip. Then, tighten down the wing nut with your fingers and give it a little snug with the pliers. Now, test out your creation. Lift the rod at the faucet and move it up and down. It should move freely and make the stopper go up and down smoothly. If it hits something or stops without full range, check to see what the linkage is hitting and make the adjustments underneath. There's a wide range of adjustments that can be made between the pop-up rod and the linkage. Now, fill up the sink and check for leaks. If you notice water weeping at the beveled washer, snug up the brass nut. Sometimes it helps to run a little warm water for a few minutes to soften up the rubber a bit to get a better seal. Well, that was a bit of a marathon, a lot of steps, but not too difficult, and now you know how to install a pop-up drain assembly. Now it frees up. If you have any questions related to the installation of this or any Simmons product, do not hesitate to call our technical support team at 1-800-SIMMONS. On behalf of the entire team at Simmons, thanks and have a great day.